Hey guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. So I recently posted something on Instagram about investing and it kind of blew up. There were so many comments, so many shares when it came to this topic. So I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Let's bring it on the show and talk about the subject of investing. And since my investment strategy has been the same forever, I was again kind of surprised by just all the comments and the questions. And as much as I believe that everyone should be investing, I also believe that no one should invest in something that they don't understand. And no one should invest before they're financially ready as well. So today I want to cover just the basics of investing. So whether investing is something that you've never done before, or you're a veteran at it, and you're just now curious about my philosophies compared to yours, then this episode is for you. So since this is investing for beginners, let's start from the very beginning. What is investing? Well, investing is taking a portion of your income and putting it into a fund that's proven to help it grow and increase over time. So you wanna do this instead of just storing your money in a savings account in the bank where it doesn't have the opportunity to grow from compound interest, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So investing really is a long-term play and it's one of the most powerful tools for wealth building. So as soon as you are in a stable place financially to start contributing some money towards investing, you need to be doing it. And listen, it's never too early or too late to start. So if you're in your 20s and you're new to being financially independent and maybe you're you know, making a smaller salary, but you're in a position where you can contribute something, then yes, something is better than nothing. And wealth building is more about behavior than math. And consistency over time, you guys, is so powerful when it comes to investing. So let's make sure that you know when it's the right time to get started. So here's the deal. I want you completely out of debt, except for your house, if you own a home. All consumer debt is gone and you have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. So this is really important because I want, again, your debt gone. I want you debt free. And then I want you to have some money liquid in the bank to get to, because it wouldn't help if you have like $20,000 in a 401k and you need to replace your tires, but you have no cash available, right? That's not helpful. So having some cash in the bank is really key before you dive into investing. Okay, let's go over a few basic terms and kind of concepts so that you feel confident about investing. So first, let's talk about what it means to buy stock in a company. So when you buy stocks, you're actually becoming part owner of a company. A very small piece of ownership now is to you when you buy a stock in a company, which is amazing. So you're buying a very small share or portion of that company so they can use that money that you're investing to grow their business and profit more over time. And when this happens, you can earn money two different ways, through dividends and stock value income. Increases. So dividends are kind of like profit sharing for all the company's shareholders. And this is where a company takes its profit and gives everyone a slice of the pie. Not all stocks or companies do this, but some do. And in this case, those dividends would go back into the stocks that you're investing in. So the stock value increases, on the other hand, are when you buy stock and you wait for the value of the company stocks to increase. So you buy stock at one price and over time the company is successful and you own that stock at a higher value. Then you can sell it and make a profit or you can keep owning that stock in hopes that again, the value keeps increasing over time. Now you might be wondering how your money grows when you're investing. So this is one of my favorite parts of the investment conversation because it involves compound interest. So before we talk about that, though, I wanna tell you about one of our sponsors, Op Games. So Op Games is amazing. They have so many different games for you and your family and your friends to play, but one of my favorites is Telestrations. So you guys, this is like the funniest game. I'm literally obsessed. People here on my team, we played it at lunch the other day. Uh, my kids even love it. Amelia, she can read, so she can actually play with us, which is so fun. So think of old school telephone and Pictionary all together. And if you're terrible at drawing like me, stick with it because it makes it even that much better. So lots of laughs, lots of memories with Telestrations. So make sure to pick it up anywhere that you buy games. All right, back to compound interest. So let's say that you buy $100 worth of Apple stock. 
if you make 10% on that stock in the first year, then the thing you bought for $100 now has value of $110. Then let's say the value increases by 20% in the next year. Now you're making 20% profit, not on the $100 that you had originally invested, but on the $110 that is in there which now is up to $132. Then let's say it jumps another 30% in value the next year. Now your stocks are worth $171. Again, remember you put in $100, now it's at 171. That means you made $71 in profit, almost doubling the value of your original purchase just by putting your money in the right place. Okay, and just to play a little devil's advocate, let's say that next year the stock actually drops in value, because remember the market does this, and sometimes it happens, but it's usually not a huge loss because when you average it out over the length of time that you're investing, your stock has still grown well past your initial investment. So for example, if your Apple stock were to decrease in value by 15%, you'd still end up with stock worth over $145. And again, over time, you'll continue making money on the profits that you passively have earned because you just put that money in and you stop doing anything else and you just watch it grow. So basically it's free money that keeps increasing over time. And this is why it is always best to start early because time is on your side. So don't wait until you can contribute $500 a month, 10 years on the road. No, you can start contributing 30, 40, $50 today. And trust me, you'll be impressed by how much progress that you've already made by the time you're in that better financial place because you started early. Okay, now let's talk about a few other terms that you should be familiar with. The S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. So all of these are indexes, which give you a summary of how the market is doing. So just think of them like measuring sticks to help you see if the market is growing or if it's declining. So the S&P 500, for example, is a list that shows how the 500 largest publicly traded companies are performing. So think about Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Google, right? 400 of the biggest companies that are publicly traded. And this is considered to be the best gauge to see how the market is doing. Then you have the Dow Jones Industrial Average, aka the Dow Jones or the Dow, and it monitors 30 big companies. Then you have the NASDAQ, which follows mostly successful tech companies. So in the news, you'll hear about all three indexes, and you can get a snapshot of how different parts of the market are doing. Now, a lot of you are curious about the difference between index funds and mutual funds. So index funds are a type of investment designed to mirror the performance of the stock market. So for example, if you invest in an S&P 500 index fund, then you're using your money to buy a little piece of all those 500 companies that were included in the index. And one pro of this method is that it diversifies and balances your investment. So you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket, you're putting them in a lot of different reliable baskets. So rain or shine, you can expect the same return on your investment that the S&P 500 produces. One disadvantage of index funds is investing is that it's passive, meaning that you don't have a professional managing your account, so your investments are kind of just on autopilot. Now, historically, they tend to follow the market, but they never beat the market. So you have lower risk and lower reward. So if you want to maximize your profit, you want to invest in mutual funds, which is why that they are such a great place to invest in retirement specifically. So a mutual fund is 90 to 200 stocks, 200 companies, which again is great because you're buying from a lot of different companies. Remember, diversifying, spreading your money around is key. And when you invest in mutual funds, you'll work with a pro who monitors the progress of your investments. And you wanna invest 15% of your gross income before taxes in retirement. Now, there are two types of retirement accounts that you wanna buy mutual funds in, and that's a 401k and a Roth IRA. So one of the differences between the two is when taxes are taken out. So money in your 401k, so that's your company's retirement plan, you're gonna actually put money in that before you're taxed on your income. So that means when you pull money out of your 401k, it's going to be taxed on the growth. Where a Roth IRA, that word Roth is really key, that means you put money in a Roth IRA after you've paid taxes. So you've paid taxes to the government, your money hits your checking account, and you say, okay, I'm gonna take that money and invest. That means over time, the growth in that Roth IRA, you are not taxed when you pull the money out because you've already paid taxes on the money that went in. Now that word Roth again is really important and some companies even offer a Roth 401k. Whenever you see Roth, go for it because again, you are gonna take money that's already been taxed out of your paycheck, 
but the growth is going to grow tax-free, which is amazing. So again, what's important here is that your 401k majority of companies will offer a match, which you definitely wanna do. So remember this, match beats Roth beats traditional, okay? So you wanna do your company's 401k match first. So let's say that they offer a 5% match. You wanna contribute 5% and match up to what the company matches you. And then you're gonna go over to your Roth IRA and put the remaining 10% in. Now, there are limits when it comes to the Roth of how much you can actually contribute. So if you haven't hit that and you still have money in your 15%, then you can go back to your 401k and invest the rest. So again, it's a little complicated, kind of nuanced, but these are two vehicles which are really important when it comes to retirement investing specifically. And we talked about mutual funds earlier. So those are actually the things you're going to be investing in over the heading of a 401k and a Roth IRA. So again, this is kind of just the basics, kind of gets in the weeds, but it's really important to remember this stuff, you guys, because when you start investing, I want you to understand where you're putting your money and what you're putting your money in. And I also recommend connecting with the SmartVestor Pro because these are investment professionals who follow Ramsey principles and they're vetted and coached by our team here at Ramsey. So they really do follow the baby steps. They make sure you're doing your 15% because we want you guys to win long-term when it comes to your money. So go to RamseySolutions.com to start working with a professional as soon as possible. And you can find more information about index funds, mutual funds, and the baby steps on RamseySolutions.com to start making some progress. And let me tell you, your future self will thank you. So send this video to a friend who may need an easy investing breakdown. And remember you guys to take control of your money and create a life you love. 